Hey everybody, Ted Forbes here and welcome back to the Art of Photography. Today is a very special day uh, because Harold Feinstein turns 84, which is amazing. And if you're familiar with Harold and his work and this enormous long body of work and career that he's put together over the years, uh, I think it's an amazing achievement, uh, all the stuff he's done and the fact that he's 84 today I think is really special. And I want to do this video as a little bit of a birthday card for Harold. So what I want you guys to do while you're watching this is leave a comment below and what I'm going to do is later today I'm going to send this link over to Harold and his wife Judith and I want them to watch this and I gave her a heads up that we were working on this so she knows it's coming. So he's going to see this and I want this to be kind of a happy birthday um, and just kind of a special thing for Harold because he's an amazing person to me and I've got some notes here that I want to go through and talk about a couple of the the ways he's impacted me, my photography, my life, uh, just in this last year. And I hope that you guys, and I'm being very serious when I say this, uh, this has been really an amazing opportunity. And I think, or I, I really hope that you guys as photographers all have that opportunity as well to find somebody that you look up to in this way and be able to spend some kind of time and the, develop a relationship with them that is extra special too, because it's just the learning that I've got just not only as a photographer, but just as a person has been just outstanding. And Harold is amazing. How this all started, just to give you a brief overview, is about, oh, probably about eight, 10 months ago, I got an email one day from a gentleman named Max Shank. And Max, I've become friends with since. He's a wonderful guy, and he's in this great situation where he is able to do some printing for Harold and to be able to kind of own his skills and you know learn from the master, I guess you could say. And it's an amazing experience for him. And he watches the show, and he emailed me and said, would you like to do something with Harold for the show. And I said, oh my gosh, absolutely. Um, when can we start? And so we rearranged schedules a little bit and I flew to Boston and we spent about three days doing interviews. And rather than just rolling one interview, we put a little teaser in there a couple months ago, which I'll link to at the end of this video. But we ended up filming enough material and the interest in the project to do a full-blown documentary on this. And that's one of the things I've been working on. And I'll give you a little update on where we are at the end of the video. But I wanna talk a little bit about what Harold means to me and why I think he's so special and I want to share this with you guys and obviously with Harold as well on his birthday here. Um, I think Harold is really important uh, as I got to know him in two different ways. Uh, one, there is Harold Feinstein, the great photographer, and two, there's Harold Feinstein, the teacher. And I want to talk about the teaching first because this is something that I was probably less aware of. I knew that he did teach a little bit, but I mean, honestly, a year ago, I knew who Harold Feinstein was. I was familiar with, most people are familiar with, which is this large body of images that he did in Coney Island in the 1950s and 1960s. And having dug into this, there's so much more uh, to Harold than just that. And that's what I really want to communicate and share with you guys. And the teaching side of this is absolutely brilliant because we were working on these interviews and you'll hear all these in the final project. Uh, I was talking to Harold about it and, you know, I was interested, well, you know, what kinds of stuff did you teach? And I think one of the questions I said was, you know, what kinds of students did you take on? Were they beginning students? Were they more advanced? And he said, I took all students. And he said, to me, the beginning students were the most important because beginners needed the best teachers. And that really sums up a lot of Harold and just his generosity, um, his personality, his giving nature. and. What I love about it is that when we talked about what he taught uh, when he was teaching classes, it really had very little to do with what kind of camera you had or what f-stops were or what shutter speed was. You get the basics out of the way and what Harold would dig into and drill on was taking students, figuring out what they were doing right in their images and in their compositions, and then working with that, using that as the jumping off and then the catalyst. And the whole thing just came out of this beautiful nature of positivity. And I mean, right then I was like, wow, I wish I could have been a student at Harold's because this would have been amazing. And, you know, having taught myself, um, I have utmost respect for that kind of attitude that goes into teaching and more teachers should be like that because that is a dying breed. It's something that you don't see very often and it's something this world needs a lot more of. The second thing I want to talk a little bit about is uh, Harold is a photographer and Harold comes from a long 70 year plus career. He's 84 today and he even at an early age at 19 years old Edward Steichen approached him he knew Edward uh, about uh, acquiring they purchased several of his works for the at the time brand new photography collection at the Museum of Modern Art in New York and for somebody at the age of 19 to make that kind of contribution shows a really raw natural talent and I've seen the images that, that were acquired and, and they are amazing um, 
most people know him from the Coney Island work, even though that's the most popular images are probably from a brief amount of time. Uh, he returned and shot Coney Island up until very recently. And there are a lot more images out there. There's color work, there's stuff that fits more into the line of street photography. Um, and then there's this whole set of architectural images that he did. Uh, there are, you know, the flowers are another subject that he became very known for because he did a book in recent years. But uh, I'll give you an example here. One of my favorite images, and there's a large archive of Harold's work because he shot a ton of stuff. Uh, there's one image that I really liked in particular which is this gentleman in a diner smoking a cigarette and the composition is just this beautiful uh, light coming in uh, as it comes through the smoke from the cigarette and it's amazing and we were talking about this image what we were doing is bringing images down we were kind of going through them and getting Harold to talk about them and he was talking a little bit about how the image was made it was shot in a diner he said it was in the middle of the day actually and I said was the guy aware of you was he posing he said no he said he had had a few drinks and was pretty much completely unaware of most things going around at that point uh, in the conversation, Harold's assistant went upstairs and pulled the contact sheet uh, that they had printed from those negatives, brought it down, and this is at the point where my jaw was on the floor, because you really start to see when you're able to look at a contact sheet of work, all the outtakes. And pretty much everything on that roll of film was usable. And the whole thing was just judgment calls, which is the definitive image. But he didn't spend a lot of time. There weren't, you know, 36 images of this gentleman from that same angle. He would take one or two shots and then move on to something completely different, change the viewpoint, change the concept, do something different with it. And that's the amazing part. And I, I'm trying to remember who it was. I believe it was A.D. Coleman that was talking about this, who used to be a photo critic at the New York Times and mentioned that you know there's kind of two types of photographers there's the type of photographer that goes in and shoots a lot of stuff really trying to perfect that moment and then there's this kind of you know improvisational confident and maybe in some way savant photographer which Harold falls into this category that can go in and you know do it quick and move on and go on to the next idea and keep exploring that way and it really just blew my mind how amazing just looking at this one context sheet was and I realized that you know the mountain that Harold and his wife Judith are on going through these archives and selecting images that they want to represent a, a shot or a theme or a person or you know because it would be really difficult to do um, the breadth of work that he does is just outstanding and so anyway there's a great story and then the other thing I want to say about Harold that I, has been really special to me on this, you know, we decided to turn this into a documentary project. I went to New York at the end of February, a couple months ago, and we lined up some interviews with some other voices that we could put in our film to kind of, you know, even it out a little bit. And I had this wonderful experience to talk to Sean Corcoran and Howard Greenberg and a lot of these people who we're going to look back at these people as being luminaries in the history of photography. And so this opportunity that I had to talk to Harold and this relationship that I was able to, to, to have with him when we did those interviews and then it starts extending to other people and again this is a reflection of Harold, it's a reflection of his personality and it's the way he is and there's this circle of people around there that are all beautiful, they're all amazing. Um, it, it, there's some really cool stuff and not just that because when I went up I put a video in the channel I've taken it down since but I just basically said is anybody in New York that would be willing to do this for free that would be willing to come out and help out with the shoot and I had three people uh, actually I had about 30 who responded and I had to narrow it down to three that could come over to the studio and help while we were doing this and uh, Sean Daphne and Beverly were nothing short of amazing so here's Harold all of a sudden bringing the art of photography community together you know, it, it's been a really special year for me, and that's why I wanted to go out of my way and do this video, just to wish him a happy birthday. And I hope you guys have found this interesting remotely. And remember, to please leave a comment below and wish him a happy birthday, because Harold will see this. And I want you guys to make a wonderful photographer feel really good on his 84th birthday today. The last thing I want to say about all this, uh, just to wrap it up, is where we are in this project. And I... It's, it's hard for me because I wish this were moving a lot faster. The reason it's not, uh, one, we don't have a budget for this, so it's kind of just all out of fun and out of pocket money, uh, which is not a problem, but that slows it down a little bit um, because it has to be scheduled in around work and other things. And the other thing that slows it down is it was great to be able to film at the YouTube space in New York City, and YouTube were wonderful. Uh, that space was free of charge to use, but there is a layer of approvals that go into that, and 
and all three of the interviews that I did there, we kind of did two different parts of. One that I could just do episodes on these people in the show and then also for use in the documentary, but there is a layer of approval that YouTube have to do because you use their space. And so it's just slowed it down a little bit and all this stuff is coming. I'm really excited about this project. It's been a ton of fun to work on and I hope in the next couple months here we can finally have it, have it finished. Um, the last thing that needs to be done is I need to go back to Boston one more time and we need to uh, revisit a couple subjects with Harold and, and just get a little bit better angle on him and, and a little bit better filming and then we've got it and I'm really excited about this. So anyway, Harold, uh, this has been an amazing year and I just want to say thank you to you, your lovely wife Judith, for bringing me into your lives and being able to share this story with my audience and with me personally and this has been just an amazing year. And so happy birthday, sir. And uh, anyway, there you have it. You guys remember, if you like this video, I will link up to the interview segment of Harold at the end of this. So remember to please like the channel, like the video, share it with your friends, and remember to subscribe because I do a ton of videos these days. And if you're interested in the Feinstein Project, uh, you'll want to stay up to date on this. One other thing I want to give you guys is a resource too. Harold's wife, Judith, maintains Harold's website and his blog. If you haven't seen this, I'm going to link it up in the show notes, and there is a ton of stuff. She does a lot of uh, working with Harold on old stories, behind the scenes. There's an amazing breadth of work, and Judith works her tail off on this. She does an amazing job, and I want you guys to all check that out as well. So I'll link to that in the show notes. Until the next video, once again, guys, this has been another episode of The Art of Photography. Happy birthday, Harold. We'll see you in the next video. Later.